we started Old Friends in 2003. Okay. And, uh, and with the, we just found out that Ferdinand had unfortunately fallen through the cracks. And he was a derby winner and it was the course of the year. And he ended up in the slaughterhouse in Japan, which was really unfortunate. But before we get too much on the high American high horse, America's worse than anybody about this. They're getting better. It's getting better. It's getting much better. But at that time, it wasn't good. And uh, so uh, I made arrangements with the uh, Japanese who were, uh, racing authorities to start bringing horses home. And it took a long time because I spoke no Japanese. And a lot of the people that were there at that time, they they'd say to me kind of like, "Well, you're going to get these horses right, and you're not going to you're not going to race them, no, and you're not going to sell them, no, and you're not going to breed them, no. What exactly are you going to do?" I said, "I said, well." well I'm going to put them in my yard and hope people come visit. And a lot of people thought this was the goofiest idea they've ever heard. So I didn't think it was that goofy. It, I could understand why it would sound goofy. Right? In the sense that there was going to be limited revenue on your end. Yeah, so, totally. Right, limited, and and why, just... why would people come and look at a horse that's not doing anything? Right. So, but I knew, they, see, John Henry and all these really great horses were over at the horse park. So I knew that... I, that was a good idea and people would come from all over the world to see him and if we did it right you know the horse park's obligated to handle all breeds but if we did it right for the thoroughbreds it could really be huge okay. so got one horse two horses at first i thought well we'll have a little mom and pop operation and now we're like freaking walmart them <laughs> <laughs> all over the They're japanese to be, the japanese be exactly right, absolutely so the japanese they um you know they they it was so good that they came and studied this place for a couple of years and now they have an old friends in Japan they have got a and not only that their farms nicer their logos better everything about their place is better than ours but well, you're the I'm glad, I'm glad yeah, we're the original, <laughs> you're yeah. the original. Yeah, yeah so how many horses do you have here currently 141 here wow. yeah we have more stakes winners than any farm in the history of horse racing we got Silvertron the oldest living derby winner we got Touch Gold, the oldest living Belmont winner. We got three Belmont winners. We got all these Breeders' Cup winners. And, you know, people come from all over the world to see them. I'm not the only nut. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's more than one of us. Have you seen tourism increase? Well, obviously, since the pandemic, since has it been going up? Yeah. Good. Well, you know, it's it really slowed us down during the COVID, of course, because we had it closed. And the, the fans are where is are, are the majority of our revenue comes from. So, so yeah, it hurt us a lot. But fortunately, we had we had a couple of donors that were just unbelievable. Good, and saved us. What are the numbers that you're seeing annually right now? Well, the most we saw pre-COVID, we were getting fifteen to twenty thousand people a year, depending on the weather, depending on all kinds of stuff, and 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 it's come back really strong. I, would, I mean, we get busloads of people. Here. I mean, I got a thing on my Google thing account that said, you have no event scheduled today, and all of a sudden, I, I, I haven't stopped all day. Because <laughs> people want to come see the horses. Do you still personally do tours? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. How many, how many more staff help you out with all the touring? Well, the great thing is, the tour guides like Tom and, and Jim, the other people that do the tours, they do a fabulous job. And they're all volunteers. They don't get paid. All, the tour guides are all volunteers. So you were you were telling uh, had mentioned that Corey was helping with with yes. the Can you tell us a little more about that? Well, see, Corey and I go back a ways because he had Kentucky Downs. I we talked about having horses at Kentucky Downs, so we had an old friends at Kentucky Downs. Oh wow! And Corey Corey's on our board of directors. Right. And then uh, you know it was actually Corey who came up with the idea because we were talking one night and I said, look, I said, what we really need is we need. Uh, we really need a place for the people to watch the races. Big TVs. Of all your of your winners yeah. here, absolutely. You watch Silver Charm and Swain go against each other in the Dubai World Cup, or Touch Gold and Silver Charm going at each other in the Belmont Saints, or Birdstone beating Smarty Jones, you know, all, the, all that stuff is so exciting. That's what makes it so exciting. And if we can show them the big races and the big TVs and stereo and all that, it'll be fabulous. And so Corey went to that. And, and where is that in relationship? Is it to large barn? So in relationship, is it back at the welcoming center at the entrance? We're putting it right there. Oh, inside right in that barn. barn. The exterior, uh, the, as okay. much as possible, the exterior of that barn 
package will be the same. It'll have heat and uh, air conditioning. Wow. It'll have restrooms and other modern conveniences. What's the tenant to finish date for that? And obviously, I, 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 I'm, I'm well. I'm, I'm hoping without any, without any uh, big problems uh, that by this year, by this time next year, it'll all be done. Oh wow! Yeah, in, in fact, probably sooner. I just hope we can get more space for more horses so we can do more of this. Uh, we have a website. We sell shares in all our horses for $100. So you can own a share of Silver Charm for $100. You get a picture, a certificate. I know we're in the Harvard Divinity School and I know we're in three bars in Miami. So <laughs> <laughs> wow. With our horses. So that's a $100 donation. Uh, and then there's all kinds of ways. We have the Hoof Patrol where people help support the hoof care. And, and then we have the old, 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 old Girlfriends Network that supports all the mayors that we have here. Barbara Fossum in our office and everybody else down there has created so many great ways to have, to have fun. We have a beautiful website where people can go on it and they can, each horse has its own little spot and, and they can look and hear the, see the stories and all that kind of stuff. And then we have special events like up at Saratoga and here, like after the Derby, we always have a big party here. And, you know, half the time, the people who won the Derby show up at the party. And so oh, wow. it's a lot of fun and we auction stuff off, racing memorabilia primarily. And, uh, you know, piece it together and there you have it. You know, it's, and then we get people that come to the farm that really, really like it, that have, that are wealthy. And, uh, and, uh, they, and they often contribute. Wow. So, I, you know, I just like to show people around it, and if it clicks and they really like it, then they really like it, and they end up doing more than you could ever ask That's for. Correct. Right. Yeah. No, I just want to thank everybody, invite everybody to come to the farm because nothing beats seeing these horses in person.